Hey everybody, welcome to Lessons with Troy. Well, this is going to be a free lesson for my arrangement of Sleepwalk in Open D for the Duesenberg using the benders. Now I'm calling this version number two uh, because several months ago I did uh, another version of this and I played it slightly different, but there were some things I didn't like about it so much. Some positions that I played in that actually one of my students recently on, on Zoom, I'm teaching these Zoom lessons, and uh, my student David uh, mentioned that he plays it off the 10th fret position, just kind of all in a closed position there. And that actually works great. You know, that one lick that's, you know, falls right under your bar there. And uh, I was before playing it like this, you know. You know, just kind of on one string, kind of going going all down the neck. But now I just kind of play it all on this this kind of 10th fret. I, I feel like it, it you, can, you can grab that chord, you know, and then just move it down two frets. But I'll go over how to play it a little bit later in the lesson. But the big thing that, that I noticed in that lesson that I tried to fix in this one was I just seemed like I was out of tune. I seemed like, seemed like this bender was out of tune and... Uh, I didn't know why, so it led me down a road to kind of experiment, and what I found was, if I'm going to be using the benders a lot, at least right now, I may change my mind down the road, but I'm going to tune, I'm not going to uh, temper my third string, right, that major third of the chord, that F sharp of my D major chord. Um, now, it doesn't to me, I don't like that sound of an untempered major third in a major tuning. You know, to me, it sounds like it wants to go be be flattened, right? But the what what you get then is when you use, let's say, in this one, I use this second string bender a lot. Well, when you use the second string bender, that get, takes that A note to a B note, right? B is in boy. And what that is, is that second string with the bender down, that B note, um, that's going to be the root note of my minor six chord, right? Now, that F sharp note then is going to be the fifth of my minor six chord. For example, in, in Sleepwalk, I go C, right? C to A minor, the one chord in the key of C to the minor six. Now, if I had tempered that F sharp, what that what that would do then is that would that would that F sharp note or the string, let's say, because it's gonna however you want to think of it, but that's gonna be the fifth of my the of my B minor, right? Or if we're in the key of C, that would be an E note, and that would be the fifth of my A, a minor. So what I was doing. I, uh, in that first one, and you can go back and listen, it sounds like it's out of tune because I tempered that that third string, and then when I used that bender, you know, it just sounds like it's slightly out of tune for some reason. But anyways, that's where I'm at now. I don't, if I'm using the benders a lot, I'm not going to temper that third string because I don't want to have the fifth of my... Those two notes with the bender down need to be in tune, right? That F sharp and that B note... Because B and F sharp, F sharp's the fifth of that of that B minor, and the fifth does not want to be flatted. The the third sounds good, tempered, flatted just a little bit. But see, those are both of them are in tune with the tuner, not not tempered. And they sound they sound good together. The problem is, is this say this D and the in the F sharp. That kind of wants to be. Normally, I would I would flatten that like minus six or seven cents. See, that sounds better to me. That's flat and tempered just a little bit. That F sharp. But then when you tr try to do that and you push your bender down and have that B in tune. Right, your, your second string in tune with the bender. Now that's way out of tune. So that's kind of where I was getting hung up. Hope that makes sense to you. 
So let me go ahead and show you this. Now, this one is a free lesson. You know, I didn't want to put it on my website um, to deal with copyrights and all that. So YouTube takes care of all that. So I thought I'd just put it on YouTube and let them deal with all that. But here's, here's a free lesson of Sleepwalk version number two in open detuning on the Duesenberg using the benders. Okay, so as I taught in that first one, you know, the harmonic part. So let me teach that real quick since I've already taught it and you can fast forward if you already know this, but basically what you're doing is you're doing this fret slide. Five to seven, seven to 14, 14 down to nine. So that's one pluck on your on your first string, right? Now how you get this harmonic is you put your bar right on fret five and you're gonna take, if you can see this part of your hand, right? Right under your, your pinky, that little fleshy part. And you're gonna put that 12 frets up. So 12 plus five is 17. So you put that part of your hand, I know you can't, this is a, not a great angle for this, but you're gonna put that right there, right above that, that fret 17. Now what that does for me is it puts my thumb about on the 12th fret. So then you're gonna do this slide. Ooh, a little sharp there. Right, five, seven, 14, nine. But you're gonna hit that harmonic first. Ooh, let me get that right. Let me hit that. <laughs> There we go, five, seven, 14, nine. Sometimes the diamonds on here, I kind of lose my positioning a little bit. So what you want to do is just slightly move your hand back and forth until you can hit that harmonic. And when you do, you gotta, you gotta lift your hand, right? You don't want to have your hand on it, it'll mute it out. And you gotta be right, right over that 17th fret with this, this part of your hand. Five, seven, 14, 9, add the harmonic in there. And you're good to go for that intro. Now, what I do with these chords, this is a really cool thing with the Duesenberg, is you got C, right? So it's in 6, 8, or, or you know, some something like that. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, when you push that bender down and you're in your C position, that's going to give you an A minor chord on strings four, three, two, and one. But I just kind of grab strings three, two, and one. Now, hold that bender down. Keep that bender down. Go to your sixth fret for that F minor. Keep it down and just slide it down one fret, and that's going to give you a G6 chord. All right, so we got C. A minor with the bender down, second string bender. Hold, keep holding it down. Sixth fret for the F minor, and then G6. And I think that was a little bit different than what I did in the first one too. But that that that's super smooth. And um, as far as like you know, using the bender, I think before I had taken the bender off and just got a regular G chord on that fifth fret. But I like this version better. Keep in mind how I'm getting that F minor, right? Third fret is an F major. If you play on your fourth, third, second, and first string, and you move that up three frets with your second string bender, I call that my A bender because it's my A string. So anyways, if I say that during the lesson, you know that means second string bender. See, that's how I ended the song with that F major, F minor. Right, so just go three frets up, push your second string bender down, turns that major chord into a minor chord. Great little trick. Okay, so then for the melody, I'm sticking right over this 10th fret here. So we got kind of slide into that first string 10th fret. And then I've got, you could play either your second string 10th fret or do the double stop there, third string, second string. 
Now I was doing this. I don't know if I necessarily like it or not. The, kind of walking it down to the melody note. It just wants to naturally do that for some reason. And sometimes I'll, I'll really, you know, let that be kind of, kind of bluesy. Now when you're there, what I do is I do an octave on my second string and fifth string. That's eighth fret, tenth fret, eleventh fret, tenth fret, eighth fret, and then you repeat that. Now here's the hardest lick of the song, except for maybe the harmonic part. But that's so much easier than doing it this way. That's how I was doing it before. So I learned stuff in these Zoom lessons too, you know. I, I love it when students show me something and a different way of, of playing something, right? Um, so, David, if you're watching this, uh, you're, thank you for showing me this this cool position. I, I, I don't know why I didn't ever think of it, just playing it right out of that C position, right? <clears throat> and then, so let me show you that lick. It's 10th fret, third string, second string, third string, fourth string. Slide it down about one fret or so. And I don't know if that's exactly, definitely isn't exactly like the, the album, but this is just over time how I'm playing it. Sometimes I'll do, right? I know a lot of my students have problems with this lick. The idea with this lick is you, you're going to go up and then you're coming back down on the tip of your bar and you're doing pick blocking, right? Even though you've got your, your hands on the benders, you're still doing blocking, grabbing the strings with your fingers. Notice there. See how I've got... Watch my fingers and my thumb. they block block out what I just played so all you hear is that all you hear is that melody you don't want it to sound like this right you got to get that tip of your bar up and drag it down and also do do pick blocking okay and then you go Stay on that third string, uh, tenth fret, and then what I do is I do that F minor again on my sixth fret. Slide it down to that G6. That's with your second string bender down, right? So let me play it again. So you don't want to resolve it to the root note yet, right? And then go to that F minor. Okay, then you just repeat that whole thing, that, that whole A section. I hear you resolve it. Now, when you're there, you're going to go 10th fret, 4th string. Go into that A note on your fourth string, seventh fret, right? Because it's basically going to that four chord, your F chord. But I just go. Now I'm going to turn that C chord into a C7 by uh, taking that root note and moving it back two frets. Right? Fourth string, 10, 9, 8, leading me into the bridge. Now, the bridge, this is where you're really going to get your mileage out of your bender, right? So you go, so it goes to a four chord, and then it goes to a minor four chord. That's how the, the chord progression goes. So it goes to an F, and then an F minor. So check this out. We got second string, first string. We do this. To get that melody note. And then you're going to slide 12, or sorry, 12 to 14. 
So 12 to 14, 12, 10, 9. Now, to get that F minor, right, it goes to F minor there, just do your second string bender, and then I just take my thumb and kind of strum on my, on my fourth, third, second, and first string on my sixth fret. And then once again, slide up to 14, 12, 10, 9, C chord. So the melody is here on your second string. So there I go, 10th fret, 2nd string, 3rd string, 2nd string, oh sorry, and then you're sliding into your 12th fret, 2nd string, and then I do this real quick kind of uh, grace note, this, just a little uh, trill or whatever you call that. Now I want to turn that C into a C7 chord again, right? So what I do is I I do my third string and first string, but I just go right because that's your C that is going to be a C minor or C7, sorry C7 chord, leading us into and that's just on your third string, first string. However you want to do that. That's kind of the, the idea. And then we go once again, B, the uh, bridge. Push down that second string bender, 12 to 14, 12, F minor. Now here you go to your, your five chord, your, or your G chord. Oops. Basically, I'm sticking on my fourth to first string there, uh, uh, fifth fret for that G chord, and then a B flat chord on my eighth fret. Okay, now we've got one more A section at the end, which is we've already done this. All right, the melody. lick that we went over just a second ago. Now here's where we get. So I just go to that third string, just ending the melody there, just to kind of leave it open because I don't want to resolve it yet to the root note. Now I go to an F major, third fret, all the strings. Now notice my thumb here as I slide this up and hit push my second string bender down. My thumb is going to mute out my sixth string and fifth string right here. I do that a lot, you know, with lap steel. I'll use that thumb to mute out certain strings. So we got F. Slide it up to your sixth fret. Push your, push your uh, second string bender down to turn that F into an F minor. Right? And then I end on C. Now, I'm going to slide that all the way up 12 frets up to my 22nd fret. And I'm going to push my, my second string bender down to turn that C into a C6 chord. Because although that's C and that's A minor, A minor can also, it's like the same notes of a C6. So if you... Oop, a little too fast of a slide there. So we got... Right, slide that all the way. You can't see it, but it's way up here. It's basically, basically two frets from your pickup. So here's your pickup. That's 20, uh, 24, 23, 22. That's your C chord up 12 frets. Because 10 plus 12 is 22. Push that A, bend, that A bender down or second string bender down, and that will give you your C6 chord. There's my updated version of Sleepwalk using the Duesenberg in open D tuning using the benders. Okay, guys, thanks so much. We'll see you on the next lesson. Take care. Bye.